This is Parametric EQ2 in FL Studio. And in this video, I'm gonna break down very simply the basics of EQ and what all these little colorful buttons do. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to use this. And this video is a clip from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio, which you can find in the description of this video if you want to see other simple tutorials on how to use things in FL Studio. So first of all, if you move horizontally across here, this is frequency. If you take a look at the top left corner on the hint bar, you can see that it has 24 hertz and 8 dB. So whenever you move vertically, that's an increase of volume. And whenever you move horizontally, that's a different area of the frequency spectrum. So each one of these seven bands are different areas of the frequency spectrum that you can manipulate. And you can move them literally wherever you want to. And whenever you raise one of these, it's going to raise the volume of that selected frequency range. And the opposite whenever you go down. For instance, if I go down right here, everything above f around 4K is going to be lowered in volume. So I have this break loop right here. So I can demonstrate this easily. So EQ is mainly used for two things. One for creative effects, like for instance, the underwater effect, and also the radio effect. And it is also used to sculpt your sound and just for general mixing purposes. So with each one of these different bands, you can select a different type of filter type. I'm just gonna get rid of all of these except for one so I can show you exactly what a filter is. We've got this one band and if you right click it, you can see these options open up, which is reset, which is if you want to reset it to its initial position and type is the type of filter it is, order is how steep the filter is, and key is actually where you can make this band move to a specific pitch based on its frequency because all pitches is frequency. So let's go over these different filter types. One is a low pass. This is what you would use for a underwater effect or just to get rid of high end. It's called a low pass because it's letting all of the low frequencies pass. A high pass filter is getting rid of the low frequencies and letting the highs pass through. Whoever named that should be stoned. Next up, we have a bandpass filter, and this is generally what's used for the radio effect. And it's called a bandpass because it's only letting the frequencies in a certain band pass through. So it's getting rid of low and high frequencies. It's like a combination of a low and a high pass filter. Next, we have a band stop, which is the opposite of a bandpass. It's a selected band will have those frequencies not come through. And that gives you more of like a phasery texture. These are really good for doing like neuro bases and things like that. And then we have a low shelf. A low shelf is just if you want to boost low frequencies. Or if you want to take away some low frequencies. So the difference between shelf filters and high pass or low pass or band pass filters is a high pass and a low pass are used to get rid of an entire section of the frequency spectrum. With a low shelf or high shelf, that's to give a more subtle effect. So if you don't want the bass to be gone completely, but you just want it to be a little bit quieter, that's whenever you would use a low shelf. And then the same thing for a high shelf. So the shelf filters are more used for sculpting the sound and adding subtle changes to the sound. And last but not least, and then we have a peaking filter, which is what I think these are uh, set to at default. Let me go to default just to make sure I'm not lying. Yeah, so that's what all of these bands are set to at default. And the peaking filter is mainly used for taking out frequencies you don't like. And it's basically for more surgical EQ. So the next thing you need to know about this is what is a cutoff frequency and what is a Q. Because those are the two most important things with filters. So I'm going to change this to a low pass. 
I'm gonna right click this, go to order, and go to steep eight. And the steeper your filter is, the more aggressively it's gonna cut out those high frequencies. And your Q, which you can find here at the bottom right, underneath the frequency knob, is gonna shape your filter slope. And that just gives you control on how hard or soft you wanna cut off those high frequencies. And that's mainly the gist of what you need to know for this if you're a beginner. Up top, FL Studio has made it really simple by having uh, different frequencies, uh, spectrums labeled like treble, presence, higher mids, mids, low mids, bass, and sub. And the last thing is automation. Let's say you wanna automate this cutoff so it can go from underwater to being above ground. If you right click this band, there's no option to create automation clips. So what you have to do is go down to here, these little circles. Each one of these control one of the bands. So you see when I move this wheel side to side, it brings the frequency side to side. So if you wanted to automate the cutoff of this low pass filter, you would go down to this circle at the bottom right, right click it, and you can create automation clip. And then boom, shakalaka. And that's how I use Fruity Parametric EQ 2. This video is a clip from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio, which you can find in the description of this video if you'd like to learn more simple tutorials. Have a good day.